So suppose I have a sensory story that has the line, the parrot squawked in it. And I'm going to use this. <coughs> Sorry, it's a horrible noise. To illustrate the, the parrot squawking. Okay, and I'm going to tell this story to an individual who has profound and multiple learning disabilities. And I'm going to be looking to see how they respond to the story and to see what, um, what their understanding is and how, how they're developing in response to the story. So, on Monday... I tell the story, I say the parrot squawk, and I get the response. I get a flinch reaction, and I get a smile. And so I see that reflex response, that flinch in response to a loud noise, and I think, ah, P level one, because that's a reflex. So a reflex response would be a P level one. On Tuesday, I tell the story, I say the parrot squawk, and I get the same reaction. And I notice that I got the smile, just as I did on Monday. So on Wednesday, when I tell the story, I'm thinking, I wonder if that smile is going to be there. Because if they're showing a consistent response to a stimuli, then that's a P level two, and that's a higher achievement. So on Wednesday, I tell the story, I say the parrot squawk, and I get the same response again. I get the flinch, and I get the smile, and I think, oh, great, P level two, that's super. On Thursday, I tell the story, I say the parrot squawk, I get the same response. On Friday, on Friday, something really interesting happens, because on Friday, I tell the story, I say the parrot squawked, and I get... The flinch response before I've delivered the stimuli and that, that's really super because that is that individual communicating with me saying I know what comes next in this story, I remember this story, I know what happens and my favourite part is coming next and I'm ready for it. So that's awesome and it's really exciting when that happens. It doesn't always happen but it's really exciting when it does and with horrible things like this that really produce that reaction it's easier to see them with some subtler stimuli. Now compare that to a different way of telling the story. So say, this time, on Monday, I tell the story, I say, the parrot squawked, I get the response, I see the smile. On Tuesday, I remember that on Monday, I had that smile response, and so I know that this individual is likely to like this section of the story. And so I get to this part and I say, are you ready? This is the part where the parrot squawks. Are you ready, the parrot squawks, the parrot squawks? And I get lots of the response and lots of smiles and it's really fun. And on Wednesday, on Wednesday, actually on Wednesday it's not me because on Wednesday I've got an appointment and so it's somebody different telling the story. It's a supply teacher into my class telling the story. And they get to the part where the parrot squawks and they look at this and they think, this is going to disrupt the learning of the other pupils. Everybody's working quietly. I don't want a loud noise like this. So they just show the individual the stimuli and they don't get a response at all. Just passive. So on Thursday, I'm back, and I'm really looking forward to telling the story because I know this is the bit that they like the best. And so I get to the story, and I'm telling them, and the parrot squawked, and I go to put my hand on the, the squawky thing, but it's not in its usual place because the supply teacher's put it away somewhere different. So I have to go and find it, and I find it, and then I go, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it. I'm like, yeah, that's great, isn't it? I found it super. And I get the response, and it's nice. And then on Friday, I say the parrot squawked, and I'm just about to do it when somebody knocks on my classroom door, and I have to have a little conversation about playground duties, and then I have to look at the response, and I get that. And that's great. And this second version, the individual experiencing the story, has had a beneficial sensory experience through the week. They've enjoyed the stimulus, they've had that stimulation that will have benefited their cognitive development, their neural pathways, all of that. So it's not that the person in the second example is doing anything wrong they are still providing something valuable. It's just that the person in the first example gave the story the structure and the consistency to enable that individual to communicate their learning and their knowledge back to them. And that's just, it's really fab and it's something you can do if you are really consistent and really structured and really organised about where you keep your horrible squeaky things.